What's up everyone? Andrew Erickson here with Fantasy Bros. Today's video is talking about fantasy football strategy that will make or break your team in 2023. Building your bench is an extremely important part of fantasy football. Crushing the early rounds of your draft is fantastic, but there's a 0% chance that your starting lineup in week one ends up being the same starting lineup in week 13. That's why it's so important to focus on building the most optimal bench to win your fantasy league. You can do everything perfect, but trades, injuries, and failures are bound to happen but the perfect bench can help mitigate those issues. We'll walk through building your bench position by position, and we'll kick things off with wide receivers and running backs. With receivers and running backs, you want a bench full of players that can take the job of one of your starters. You want to target guys with a realistic possibility of having a breakout. There are plenty of guys with solid floors that will be available on waivers as soon as the season goes on. But those special breakout potential players with high ceilings are the guys you want to fill your bench with, you need to fill your bench with. An example of a guy with breakout potential that you can target in the mid to late rounds and stash on your bench is rookie running back Zach Charbonnet. Kenneth Walker is the lead back for Seattle in theory, but that's what makes Charbonnet such an interesting pick. It's a various ambiguous situation. Pete Carroll really hasn't given us any specifics about the running back splits for his backfield. Walker could retain his lead back role, but we could also see Charbonnet factor in on third down since he definitely has the better receiving profile. And Charbonnet is a well-rounded player that could also contribute on early downs. This could be a split backfield, and at the very least, you're stashing your bench with a young running back whose skill set offers three down potential capabilities if Walker were to go down. Charbonnet isn't a guy who will be in your starting line of week one, but he's got the same big upside that Walker had just last season. And an even later option you can go with is running back Kenneth Gainwell. Let me preface this by saying this is not influenced by the rumors that Gainwell could be the lead back. Preseason workloads aren't always indicative of how the backfield will look in week one. But regardless, Gainwell is a late run option who is a perfect bench stash. The Eagles backfield is another ambiguous backfield. DeAndre Swift is the most proven back in this offense and has shown RB1 capabilities. Rashad Penny is the guy who profiles as the best fit for Philly's offense if he can stay healthy. But both of these running backs have struggled with injuries and inconsistent usage in the past. And that leaves him a very realistic window for Kenneth Gainwell to see opportunities. He's a smaller back, but don't be fooled by his size. He's capable of being a three down back. And despite his size, he's been utilized at the goal line in the Eagles offense in the past and has done very well when given the opportunity. He's the perfect guy to stash and wait for a midseason injury upside to hit and put directly into your lineup for league winning upside. You can also put a running back on your bench. That's a plug and play option. The guy who falls into this category is David Montgomery. David Montgomery finds himself in a Detroit committee with Jameer Gibbs after years of being a clear RB1 for the Chicago Bears. But this is a brand new territory he's entering, the territory of a stable bench running back. With a player like Gibbs, it's going to be difficult for Montgomery to offer big weekly upside. But we also know that he's got enough work to have the realistic possibility of getting you a solid effort if you have to plug him into your starting lineup. But again, don't overfill your bench with Montgomery type players. For the most part, Focus on the options that could have league winning upside, but it doesn't hurt to have one nice stable option like Montgomery that you can turn to during bye weeks. For receivers, you want to target guys that can draft as your wide receiver four or five, but have legitimate upside to take the job of your wide receiver two. You don't want to bench full stable floor receivers. You can grab those guys off waivers every week. You want the guys who have high ceiling potential. The perfect example of a high ceiling bench option is my guy. My pick for the breakout rookie receiver of the year in 2023 is Baltimore Ravens wide receiver Zay Flowers. Of all the rookie wide receivers, Flowers has the most realistic path to becoming his team's number one wide receiver. Flowers will contend with Rashad Babin and Odell Beckham Jr. And ultimately, Mark Andrews should continue to be the first look in the Ravens offense. But considering Bateman has yet to break out and struggle through injuries, and while Odell is Odell, a 30-year-old Odell coming off an ACL injury in a long time off, the path is clear. And at Flowers' current ADP, he could easily provide league winning upside. Flowers fits the profile of a typical rookie breakout performance of someone like Amon Ross St. Brown. St. Brown had a very realistic path to wide receiver one upside on his team. It was a popular sleeper pick that you could stash on your bench while he was working out through adapting to the NFL and then reap the massive benefit once he finally ascended to lead receiver in the back half of the season. I can see a similar path for Flowers. He's the perfect high ceiling bench option. Now in deeper leagues, you might have bigger starting lineups, and that does mean you need to also have some safer bench options. Let's do one more example of a strong bench receiver going later for deeper leagues. When I say safe, I don't necessarily mean old, reliable veteran, because there's a thin line between old and washed. But you can look for an experienced player who may not have that huge ceiling or potential to be his team's number one, but has typically shown himself to be a reliable option. A guy like Jacoby Myers could be the bench player who isn't really going to give you league winning upside, but you can put him into your lineup and feel comfortable knowing he'll be on the field, likely upwards of 90% of the snaps, be the second look as the quarterback drops back, and has shown the ability to operate as a low-end wide receiver two, high-end wide receiver three. 
the kind of guy you can put in your flex spot in a pinch. With Darren Waller, with the Giants, Mac Collins in Atlanta, there's plenty of targets for Myers to dive right into, and his skill set should play well with Devontae Adams. Myers is a guy that no one is reaching on, but is a player you can trust as a flex option. If you want a chance to win a signed Josh Jacobs Las Vegas Raiders jersey, courtesy of bettingpros.com, your place to start betting smarter and not harder, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Comment below in this video, and that's it. We'll be announcing a winner this week, so this is your last chance. Turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. The quarterback conundrum. Regardless of roster size, your bench should almost exclusively be comprised of wide receivers and running backs. There are some analysts that we tell you to never draft a back of quarterback or tight end, but that really doesn't have to be the case because there are different strategies that do require you to carry a secondary option. With your starting quarterback, you're either drafting an elite quarterback, a stable QB1, or you're taking a late round strategy. If you draft an elite quarterback, there's no need to roster a bench QB. You'll start your elite option weekly, so you don't need another option unless injury happens or a streaming option for a bye week. And then you just hit waivers. But if you go with a late round quarterback strategy, it's reasonable to roster a second option on your bench, either for streaming purposes or just safety. Let's talk about a very popular quarterback sleeper pick that you should probably pair with another QB option, Anthony Richardson. Richardson is coming in as a QB 16. Rookie quarterbacks are extremely risky, but when the rookie offers big rushing upside, you might want to take the chance that the upside pays off. But rostering just Richardson feels a bit uncomfortable. If things are inconsistent, you'll need to have another option. You can easily pair Richardson up with a guy like Kirk Cousins. If there's one low-end QB1, high-end QB2 that you can draft and be very assured he'll finish right around his ADP, it's Captain Kirk. He's finished as a top 12 quarterback in four of the past five years. He's a fine, stable, and reliable option. Cousins lacks the upside to finish as a top five quarterback, but he's in a high volume offense with the league's best receiver. And aside from one or two bad weeks, he's typically giving you a very stable floor. Cousins is the perfect player to pair with a quarterback like Anthony Richardson. On weeks where Richardson has good matchups, start him. And in questionable matchups, you can pivot to your solid bench option with Kirk Cousins. The trouble with tight ends. Reiterating the strategy for quarterbacks. Tight end is typically the position where you want to just go with the guy in your starting lineup. If you need another option, pick up a streamer. The one instance where you want to draft two tight ends would be if you have an injury prone or potentially volatile option as your tight end one. Let's say you draft Darren Waller. I love Darren Waller. I've drafted him a lot this year, but we can't ignore the fact that he's been an injury liability. To protect yourself, you want to draft a stable tight end in the later rounds or draft a tight end with unknown workload upside like a Dalton Kincaid. But starting him in week one feels uncomfortable. In these situations, maybe you target a guy like Chick Conquo in the later rounds. Okonkwo started to gain traction last year in week 12, and from that point through week 18, Okonkwo was the tight end 7, averaging 9.5 fantasy points per game in PPR, while splitting time with Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper is completely out of the picture, and Okonkwo will assume the tight end 1 role in Tennessee. He was a very popular sleeper pick before the Titans added DeAndre Hopkins, and while that addition hampered the major potential breakout for Okonkwo, he's still a clear lead tight end being drafted in the later rounds, with a quarterback who has shown to favor the position in the past, He's perfect for your bench as an insurance policy for more ambiguous situations. That's going to wrap up how to build the perfect bench in 2023. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and share with all your friends. And make sure you go to check out fantasypros.com.